Hello and welcome to another Demis Helen tutorial. So as you can see from the title, Carte Blanche Remix using only free software. So just as a quick disclaimer, Cubase isn't free, we all know that. Uh, but you could technically get it for free. You could buy a podcasting kit, you could buy a microphone or something like that. And you can get Cubase LE thrown in for free. So yes, you could use it, uh, but this version isn't free. But just to save the hassle of going through and installing something like Reaper and making sure all the plugins work with it and make sure that everything runs smoothly and I can record it properly, this just enables me to get this video out here. So everything is free apart from the digital audio workstation, but you can simply recreate it in another one. So just want to give a quick shout out to myloops.net they have a section where you can download a load of free samples and that's where these red loops have come from here. I've used a kick drum from there as well in red and then there's various other websites like I use this uh, dead mouse kick here and that came from Splice but it's free, you don't have to use any credits so it's totally free sample, all you have to do is sign up on a free trial on there and you can get that freebie. So that's free as well. Uh, and then various other websites that I'll link in the description down below to obviously outline where all of the samples came from. And I'll include, in fact, I'll just include a full list of all the synths and all the plugins that I've used for effects. Okie dokie. So without further ado, let's listen to it because I know you're dying to listen to it. Um, and I'm just going to let it play through, I'll say, to this section here and then we'll start talking about some of the sounds. Okay, so here comes the drop. It's pretty close. It's laid two synths up. So the bass line is probably the hardest part of this track, uh, trying to imitate a TB303, which is, I'm taking a guess, is what it sounds like in the original. Uh, it was pretty difficult in Simit 1. Okay, so that is carte blanche. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with the results for the... the just everything being free, to be honest. It just shows you how powerful all these free things are if you utilize them correctly. So let's just have a quick walk through the synth section. So I'll just loop this here. We have the main lead one coming from synth one, and it's my LD first preset. And I've just tweaked it a little bit here and there just to give it more of that carte blanche feel. She's hard to describe, I just kept messing around till I got the sound right with the detune and um, the filter section here with the ADSR. It just had to be right. Uh, 
and I pitched it up one octave. Um, and the reason that I pitched it up one octave is because there's a higher, little bit more of a piercing sound on the top of the synth. And I couldn't recreate it in the secondary synth, so I created it in this to obviously add a little bit of top end. Um, I started the lead originally in this one, uh, but it had too much attack. Even if I turned it off, then it just got a little bit... It's just weird how Synth 1 filters things in, even without any resonance on the filter at all. It still has this weird, like, boxy sound on it. So I didn't really like it. Tried to EQ it out. Didn't work too well. Then... If you already know which one this is, obviously you might be able to see it down the right hand side, can you? And no, you can't. Which synth have I used for the Cart L and R? If you've watched my videos before, you'll probably have already guessed it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, as you can see, so let's have a look. Let's open it the right way around. Of course, it's Helm. And because it's mono, I've used left and right. So it's the same patch and then slightly tweak just to give it a bit more of a stereo field and then on the mixer it is panned hard left and hard right so if you look down here you can see left and right on the mixer so let's have a listen i think this is what sounds closer to the original it still has that weird bubbly feel it sounds beautiful. For free, why am I complaining? There is nothing to complain about, but that is the synth there, and then layered up with synth one. Just had that little bit of a top end on it. Just has that top end nicely. So they are the three main leads that I use in there. Then the third one uh, that you hear, uh, should we say three main leads, there is obviously two main leads but split in half. So the third lead here is obviously the arpeggio from the beginning. And it's made in good old Kyra tune. It's called Saw when you first load it up and I just turned everything off, turned the unison down to one and then just tweaked it and added a bit of noise in to give it a bit of presence and tweaked the sound down here to get it nice and plucky and turned off the internal delay. And I just want to say the whole melody has been totally recreated from ear. It was quite painful. I could have got a MIDI file, but I chose to just do it by ear. And this bit was easy. The bass line, I sort of worked out the rhythm in there. It's a little bit hard to tell uh, how it's fully been made because there's a lot of delay on it as well. And then this was probably the hardest melody to recreate at one in the morning when I decided to do this. Why I decided, but there we are, that is the melody. I'm going to link everything down below anyway, uh, so you can see all the things and you can get all the presets that I used to make this on the free synths. Uh, so that is that melody. And we'll go into the mixer a bit later on. And then we have the piano. And this is probably the best find as a a million different uh, piano emulations out there. But this one sounded pretty damn good when I was listening to the demos. And it's powered by Producer Spot there. So you can see classic uh, key zone. It sounds pretty realistic. And there we are. That, that's as simple as it gets. It's the first piano that comes out of the, uh, the presets there. So just to change the release and turn the reverb off. And there we are, done. That completes the piano section. And then we use the same to bounce down a key hit to create the reverse piano. So all I did was use this piano and just did this. Just sampled that and then bounced it down and reversed it. Simple. 
So you get that nice... It sounds so good. Uh, okay, so that is looking at all of the elements that put that together. Uh, the only other thing that we've got from a synth is the bass line and the pads. So the pads, again, come from uh, Synth 1. And it's a preset they already made way back uh, called Pad Washout. Just changed how the amp mod works. And on the filter, the amount was up a little bit, so it gives it like a little bit of a spike. So I just turn that off. And it's done. You just use automate the filter to filter it in and out. And finally, the bass. So let's just have, we'll, we'll play it from here. It's not perfect on there, but it's going to do for this remix. And again, it's called uh, Bass F Saw. And what I did is just tweaked it and then used an LFO to move around the filter to get a bit of that sort of TB303 sound with a bit of resonance on there. It kind of worked. It's not exactly how I wanted it to be, but it sonically fits with the track and it sounds good. And it's the closest I'm going to get, really. Uh, there's a lot of VSTs out there that just don't work on Mac. Uh, that I could have used. So that is everything there. So let's have a look at the kick. So like I said, this comes from uh, myloops.net and all you have to do is sign up to the newsletter and then you get access to a ton, actually, a ton of presets. Uh, presets, uh, samples for free and you can download them all. So I downloaded the kick pack and I've used that on there and it sounds pretty good. It's uh, it's not perfectly in the key of the track and I haven't bothered pitching it, but it's actually within the scale of the track. So that'll do me fine just for the remix. Uh, and then we have the loops. So the first one sounds like this. Very old school sounding, I thought. And this one, um, the triple note, the double note, sorry, did it, did it, did it, just, it, it held the track back. It was quite weird to hear it that way. So then I found another loop, which had a really heavy clap in it, and it's why I avoided it the first time round. So I thought, I'll just cut it out. Just to get all that detail in between. Uh, so all together, you get this. Uh, let's actually get that there. get quite a nice effect and then I laid a clap on oh that, that's not going to play that's why I didn't play uh, let's get it back there and the cut sample gives that sound like you've got a bit of a pre-delay on your uh, reverb sound and they used it in the original track. They used like a pre-delay on the clap, so it worked out quite nicely. And that is it. So if we look at Groove Agent, these are the collection of free samples that I used. So we have the Korg Orchestra Hit. That's the closest I could get to that kind of orchestra hit they have in there. It's a mixture of the synth and an orchestra hit, I think. So I put it in there just for taste, and it does obviously make that little drop into the melody sound really good. That's the closest in Tambra that I could get to the synth, uh, the synth, the symbol that introduces the melody as well. That's a, that's a crash symbol, a clap, and then that snare for the snare roll in that middle section. So all of them are free. I'll uh, link all them down in the description below as well. Uh, and I'm just going to show you... There was one more thing on here. Oh, yeah, we have a... Um, the dead mouse kick and everything down here. So uh, we have a swish effect. This also came from the My Loops pack. You couldn't ask for anything better than that, could you? And then you have this kick, which I've just put a copious amount of reverb on, which goes like this. So nice. And that gives you that entrance into the epic melody that is carte blanche. Oh, 
All right, so we've looked at the balance of the track. The balance. We haven't looked at the balance at all. Uh, we've looked at the layout of the track and everything that is involved in the synthesis and the making using samples. We're now going to take a look at the mixer. So here we are. Here is the mixer. And that's it. See you later. <laughs> no. Uh, here, I'm just going to try and drag this out. And we'll just zoom it in a bit so it's all easy to see. So, first things first, we don't use this synth here that's muted. It was awful uh, for the secondary melody. So here is the main lead one. So I decided to put Tal Reverb on the send on some of the tracks, but not on all, because on the send, a lot of the bass is cut out to stop it obviously affecting the rest of the track. Uh, on the low end, so I decided to put this one in here just to get rid of that dryness. Sorry, just enjoying that too much. Uh, and then we have Molot, just doing its thing. And as you know from previous tutorials, this is one of my favorite free compressors. This is probably the best compressor that I have in my collection. Definitely. It's got such a good sound. Okay, so there are the compressor settings there. Then I used OTT, didn't like it in the end, so I took that off. Um, then we've got Tile Filter 2, and this is providing a side chain, um, but it's currently off and it comes on later on in the track when the kick is introduced. Then we have this is the limitation of Blue Cat's Triple EQ. I've kind of held off looking into it because it's good it's just too limited for me um let's just have a look on here so i had to load three up because obviously it only comes with three bands uh maybe there's another one out there that i haven't seen but you've got one for the um high pass low pass and then you have one parametric center section uh, and that's it so i've had to use three one to do that, uh, and then I didn't want to do anything else on there. So then one to do the cut, because I couldn't really see it properly when once that was there. And then another one here to do a bit of a boost here. And the reason that you have to load more up is because you only have one of the parametric settings. So you have to load another one if you want another one to boost or cut anything anywhere else on the spectrum. Uh, and there's no visualization on it. It's, it's a big part of it, but it still does the job. Let's have a listen to it without them. Sounds nice. So, yeah, it was a bit impractical, and then that's when I switched to the rest of them. Uh, I actually used the EQ that's built into Cubase. So, let's have a listen to that channel without any inserts, and then let's listen to it after. So that's raw out of Synth 1. And then you could argue there's a little bit too much reverb on there. And it could be a little bit too long, maybe. But it sounds nice. Uh, and that is it for the first lead. So the second lead, you can see there's absolutely bugger all on it. Reason being, we have over here on the right hand side, Helm Group, because it's left and right channel. I wanted to merge it and EQ it and shape it all as one sound. So first things first, Tal Reverb. Then OTT. So you can see here, just drop the depth, which is your mix knob. And then just boosted the highs and the mids a little bit and just gained them up. And you can see, that's the settings there. Then I used the chorus effect from Tal. And that just adds a little bit more warmth into it. Just gives it a little bit more character. Again, Molot, uh, using the alpha setting on this one in particular. And you can see I've done quite a hefty uh, compression on there, because I just want it to be really controlled. And it is over-compressed. I obviously have twisted a knob somewhere by accident. Looks like the threshold, to be honest. Let's just uh, sort that out now.
Okay, just sorted that out. I'll probably tweak that a bit later once I've got my headphones uh, back on. And then we have, again, the towel fills to using volume to create a side chain. And then finally, we have a blue cat EQ here. Just doing a little bit of reduction on there just to get rid of the hiss. Uh, basically to DS the uh, the sound because it was horrendous on the ears. And this is what it sounded like before any of the extras put on. Got a little bit of EQ here going on as well. As you can see, cut out some mid frequencies quite drastically. Awful sound. And then with the inserts on, Okay, so that concludes that, and then this secondary melody, so we'll just loop the secondary melody, which is here. So first things first, uh, Steinberg's built-in stereo delay. You can use any of the free delays out there, they'll do the same. Then we have Tal Reverb again, but a little bit less drastic. And then Fat Maker, um, it was just to reduce some of the lower mids. Sounded pretty good. Oh, and I used this to reduce the bass by using the high pass. And just putting it through Fat Maker gives it a little bit more of a gritty texture. It just has that, it's, it's almost like it's a distortion unit as well. It adds a lot of coloration into it. So this is what it sounds like without the settings. Let's just check here on the EQ. Yeah, done some EQing on here as well. Bit of a boost, cut on this section again. And then cut out the bases. And then with the inserts off. Wow. And that's without the EQ as well. Sounds so good. And then the bass line. Would be nice if we could have... Ah, oh, this is the sub-bass. I didn't show you this. Uh, sub-bass, again, here. And I created a new sound and then just set the filter to taste just to get a nice sub-bass. It's quite a nice sound, actually. I've cut quite a lot off it, but it still sounds really, really nice. Um, so, in terms of production, we have used... A side chain, which it comes in the form of Tal Filter 2. Same thing again, but this is on throughout the track on this particular sound. And it's just been EQ'd to reduce where the kick hits, which is roughly 52 hertz. And you can't hear it again because I haven't put it back where it was. There we are. So we'll just rename that Sub. Lovely. So uh, they should technically be together like that. Okay. And then we have our synth bass. So we have the delay. It took me a while to perfect that a little bit listening back to the track. Then we have a blue cat EQ, and then we have another one here, all appearing on the second screen. So a little bit of a, bit of a boost here at the uh, 1K mark, and then a bit of a cut at the 2K mark here. And you can see the overlap, but um, I achieved the sound that I needed to achieve there. And then delay, and then if you look in here, I've just used this to shape it further. I'd have had to have added another one, two, three blue cat EQs there just to do what I needed to do. And it achieved the sound that I needed to do. So before that, with the EQ on, and then with the effects. So that's the closest I could get to the TB303 sound. It sounds like they've used piano. As you can see, no EQ, no processing here, but there has been EQ here just to remove the low end and then use the send to get that lovely tailing reverb with no bass on it. So that's how good that sample is. 
That synth is epic. If you can do literally nothing to it and add a bit of reverb, you're onto a winner. Um, then the reverse piano, again, for whatever reason, I've decided to use Blue Cat's EQ to remove the bass, where I could have just clicked on there to remove the bass, but I didn't. So, you know. All right, so how did we process the pads? Tal Reverb. A little bit more epically proportioned here to give it that nice, wispy, distant feel. And then a Blue Cat EQ, just to remove some horribleness. And if we remove, and it sounds like it's got some EQ there as well. So let's remove the EQ. That's how it comes out of Synth 1. Then with a bit of EQ to tweak it. And then, as you can hear that the top end is added back in by that reverb. It just adds it all back in and gives it that bit of a hiss back. So that's why I cut it on the EQ. And what have we got next? All the drum loops. Nothing at all. I will have EQ'd. Oh, I didn't. The good practice. EQ that bottom end out. Keep your headroom for your lows pretty well clear. As you can see, it's not altering the sound whatsoever. And there we are with that one. So always good practice. That was very good to have spotted that there in the tutorial. Okay, so the kick drum. I kind of like the kick, but I don't. But it's free, and it's the one that fit the best. So that's why it's been chosen. So a uh, little bit of a bass boost here, just to give it a bit more punch. Then I've used uh, Tau Filter 2 to shape the kick, because before, a little bit long. And yeah, did the track suffer? Yes. And if you can hear it in the background, it's got that at the end of it. And it was just awful. So that's, that's shaped like that for a reason. And the original kick in the original song was a little bit thin as well in terms of it wasn't punchy. And then finally, we have uh, a great freebie uh, called G Tune. There's all different ones in the G range. Tells you where your kick's hitting. Today it doesn't want to tell me. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't want to tell me, but it flashes up and tells you why, uh, what kick, uh, what frequency, what key you're in. So before, after. So it sounds like I've really weakened the kick, and I have, but for a reason. And then, Groove Agent. So, we have a clap. She's going through to Molot, or Molot, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using Sigma to get a little bit more of a snappy attack. Before. After. And a tad of EQ to cut that out. So, nothing drastic there. And then all the rest of the sound effects. So, reverb on the reverse symbol here as you can hear, and some EQ cut off. And using the uh, that for the sparkle as well. So we've got the original reverb on here, but we've got that for the sparkle. It's just how I did it at the time, don't judge me. Uh, what have we got left? And then the orchestra hit. They all go through the same channel on there. Then we have the effects and the dead mouse kick. So let's... So as you can see here, this is the dead mouse kick, is it? No, yeah, this is the dead mouse kick. So we've got reverb added in, and then we've just used the EQ to shape the kick there and just reduce some of that low end bass really, because it was just a little bit too heavy, uh, but it fits quite nicely. And then we have the effects going down, we'll just put a bit of reverb 
and we haven't done anything on the EQ. So I'm just going to cut that off there to about there. That would get rid of that low end and freeze it up to keep the kick and the bass sounding nice. Um, so there's another one tweaked. As you can see, I ain't perfect. I ain't no perfect about me. Uh, and then we have the snare here, which is going through to its own channel again. And all I've done is just reduce that. A little bit too much top end on there, so just reduce that down. And uh, you heard that little uh, Korg orchestral hit there, free sample. So there you have it, that is Carte Blanche remixed with free stuff. Composed in a not free digital audio workstation. But we can overlook that. So, do you like the track? Let me know in the comments. I really would love to hear your feedback uh, because I am seriously impressed with the precision and quality of these free synths. It's it's phenom phenomenal. I can't even say that word. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I couldn't, couldn't have done it any better, really. Um, in terms of the actual synth, it's a little bit... I could change a few things in there. I've got a good one for Spire, and that's going to be out in the pack next week anyway. Um, so keep your eyes out for the classic trans pack. But I, yeah, I could have changed that a little bit maybe. Maybe a little bit more tweaking, but it sounds very close to the original. And that's what matters, because uh, it's all free. And you guys are always asking me to do free plugin reviews and stuff. And I thought, why don't I just make a full track with free plugins so there we are uh drop a like if you think it deserves it because it just helps the channel and helps other people discover my videos and if you want them to learn just as much as you do get it shared and finally subscribe and hit the bell icon so you see when i upload i upload twice a week minimum um as the schedule is going it's monday wednesday friday and a couple of bonus videos maybe at the weekend. So that's how my schedule is. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.